This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, Jeff Cassatt will be the next mayor of the city of Hazelton. Hear what he had to say after his victory next. Good evening and thank you for joining us at FYI. I'm Ken Kerr and thank you for spending some time with us here at SSP TV. Let's get right to our election coverage from FYI and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. SSP TV and our media partner, the Hazelton Standard Speaker, we're proud to bring you the area's most comprehensive election night coverage, Your Vote 2015. The area's most experienced team, Sam LaSan Sr., Mike DeCosmo, Rick Morelli, and special guest State Representative Tara Tuhill brought you in-depth analysis, the winners, and of course, the the all important numbers courtesy of Standard Speaker Managing Editor Mark Ketcher and his news team. Whether it was TV, social media or on the web, we provided the numbers for the races that mattered to you. Now to those results. Of course, all eyes were on the race for Hazelton Mayor. Not long after the polls closed, current Hazelton Councilman Jeff Cassatt appeared to be off to a good start with positive numbers reported for him in many polling places. When all the precincts were reported, Cassatt had garnered a total of 1,555 votes. His opponent, Democratic Councilman Jack Mundy, captured 1,080 votes, while political newcomer and independent candidate Scott Cahalan captured 674 votes. FYI immediately posted Cassatt's celebration to our Facebook page where it received 1,400 views. And we were there when his supporters realized that he had won. I'm sure there's been some great celebrations here. I've been to great celebrations here. Where does this rank? I know you really haven't gotten a moment to suck it all in, but I mean, how much are you enjoying it with uh, everyone you love? Well, it's it's probably number one in, in my books. I, I really appreciate being able to spend the day with my parents, my friends, my team, you know, everybody that's close to me. But I, you know, I, I do thank the people for believing in me and believing that I will help the city in the future. You know, but you know, we, we've had some pretty good events here and helped a lot of people with their own needs and charity work. So if to say it's the best, I that I couldn't tell you. You know, it's we've had a lot of good events and celebrations here. You thanked your parents. You think when you were little, they thought our son's going to be the mayor of Hazleton one day. What have they said to you throughout this process? <laughs> no, I'm sure they never thought I'd be the mayor, but I'm sure they're very proud of me. They raised a good... I'm going to say they raised a good kid. I don't know if some people might have a different opinion, but, you know, I, I think everything is, is good. I know it's a lot going on right now. What do you want the people of Hazleton to know? Just even if you had to address them right now as a thing, what do you want them to know as you're getting ready to come in? Well, I just want them that I, I will work hard and I'll be there to listen and I'm, I'm going to be proactive and try to help the city move forward, as well as I believe everybody else that ran in is seated right now. So uh, just have, have faith. Have, take, you know, it's going to take some time to move forward, but you know, we're all going to move back together. I'm looking forward to going to work next week, you know, and said Jack is still going to be there. He's a great guy. You know, and we're going to try to really sit down and get everything moving. FYI also caught up with Jack Mundy after the totals were in and he realized that he was not victorious in his bid for mayor. Well, I'll, I'll still continue on council. I've worked hard for the, the residents of Hazleton. You know, I've, we've opposed the tax increases that, you know, Mayor Yanuzi had, had wanted in his budget and we eliminated the, the stormwater fee uh, or eliminated in that budget. It's still an ordinance. Whether you know the, the next mayor wants to put that in force or use that in his budget, that's something we're going to have to talk about. Both Mundy and Cassatt are current members of City Council. Mundy is in his fourth term on council and still has two years left. Meanwhile, independent candidate Scott Cahalan was pleased with the support he received during his first try of public office. He also did not rule out another run at public office in the future. Cassatt's victory as mayor will leave a vacancy on City Council. And as for City Council, two seats were filled on election night. Robert Gavio will get one of those spots. And right now, unofficially, incumbent Gene Mope has the other. On official results have the Democrat Mope beating Republican John Keegan by 16 votes on Election Day. Keegan says he'll wait and see for the official results. And he's also going to talk to county officials about an irregularity he was told about on Election Day. Keegan told the Standard Speaker that a poll worker at the Vine Manor High Rise on West Mine Street was telling people how to vote and that that person working there did not live in that ward, doesn't live in that ward. If the results hold, we ask Mope what she plans to do in her set next term. Well, right now, one of the things I wanted to address uh, is blight, and possibly we can do it through the Elm Street uh, uh, program. 
Uh, the other thing is the crime, naturally, which we would want to intend to uh, uh, fix that problem or try to help eliminate it. I asked for uh, the task force that was here previously under Kathleen Kane to come back to the city at least to visit, but I would really hope that they made a permanent residence here, uh, at least one of the headquarters, because we are in an area where we have the traffic that intersects from uh, 80 and 81, which is bringing the element into the area. And I think because they addressed us and considered us the most important area to come to first, they should consider putting us as a headquarters for them. Well, four new faces and one incumbent will join the Hazleton Area School Board in January. Political newcomer Vincent Zola was the top vote getter with just over 6,900 votes. Zola's name is well known throughout the district since he served as the district's former security director. Incumbent Tony Bonomo secured his seat on the board, earning close to 6,400 votes. Zola's running mate Bob Fume, a former West Hazleton councilman, earned over 6,100 votes. And running mates Mary Kay and Jackie Scarcella captured the last two available seats seats. Kate previously served on the board while this was Scarcella's first run. This was the first defeat for longtime school director Dr. Robert Childs. The local pediatrician has served 16 years on the board. He passed on a run in the primary and later decided to run as an independent candidate in Tuesday's election. His two running mates Lori Lawson and Casey Hersim were also unsuccessful in their attempt to win a seat on the board. Turning to results from Luzerne County, Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis will return to the courthouse for another four years. The Republican incumbent DA defeated her Democratic challenger Vito DeLuca. DeLuca conceded the race to Salavanta, Salavantis via a text message. Salavantis took over the DA's office four years ago. And it appears that three incumbents were among the top six vote-getters last night for Luzerne County Council. According to the Luzerne County website figures, incumbents Tim McGinley, Edward Brominski, and Stephen A. Urban were victorious. The other three winners included former council member Eugene Kelleher and newcomers Jane walsh Wakus and Robert Schnee. Five of the six were Democrats. The sixth, Schnee, was on the ballot as a Republican, but ran as a Democrat in the primary. Schnee was one of the two candidates from the Hazleton area. Mark Rabo was the other local candidate. According to unofficial tallies, Rabo did not make it into one of the six seats available. It was a Republican sweep in West Hazleton. The four open seats for Borough Council will go to members of the Grand Ole Party. James Bucky Kalaga was the top vote getter, followed by John Chura, Charles Karchner Jr., and Louis M. Pacelli. Kalaga currently serves as Borough Council President, or on Borough Council. West Hazleton's Borough Council will go from six to seven seats next year. Currently, Mark Yeager is the Council President, Craig Kochner is the Vice President, and they are joined by William Sharkey. Who would steal radios from firefighters? Someone took the radios of Tamako firefighters this morning as they were fighting a fire at an empty half-double home on Biddle Street. As the firefighters worked, someone entered one of their vehicles and removed radios and other equipment. According to our media partner, the Standard Speaker, police detained a juvenile suspect. A state police fire marshal was called in to investigate the cause of the fire. Coming up next on FYI, a local business owner tells us how her late father inspired her to launch a charity effort in our area. And later, Dave Seaman from the Standard Speaker and I tackle the first college football playoff rankings of the year and much more in sports. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. This year marks the 11th annual Cold Hands Warm Hearts program right here in our area. Pleased to be joined by the lady that started this wonderful organization to help others, and that is Carmen Parlator of the Shop 2 in Hazleton. Carmen, this is such a wonderful idea. It's been going on for 11 years, and it's all in memory of your late father, Joe Madden Sr. So thanks for being here. Tell us how this all came about. Well, thanks for having me. Um, this is the first time I've been televised with this in 11 years, but um, it's all about my dad. Um, he passed away in 2002, and I was trying to think of something. I was really missing him, and I thought around the holidays, what can I do in his memory to kind of bring him back so I thought of this collection through a story that he had told me many, many years ago. 
Um, he served in the Army in World War II over in Europe. And um, he talked about these kids that he would meet and uh, pitied them so badly and wanted to give all the time. That's how he was. So he, um, he used to give out his extra hats, scarves, gloves, candy, bars, whatever, and so did the other soldiers too. And he told me the story and it touched me and I never forgot it. And I even had the pictures. He showed me these pictures of these kids. And um, so when I was trying to think of something to bring them back, this is what I came up with. So now I came up with this collection. This is the 11th year. It's called Cold Hands, Warm Hearts. And what I do is I take bins throughout the area, businesses, offices, um, and we even have a giving tree at uh, Boss Cobbs. And you could just throw in a new item of either a hat, scarves, gloves, coats. Blankets are much appreciated too. And then everything goes into these bins. I collect them, take them to the United Charities, and then the wonderful girls there divvy them up at a distribution in December and they go to the families in need. Wow, I just think this is a fabulous idea. I'm sure your dad must be so thrilled that you're following through with something that meant a lot to him to be doing that. And if somebody is watching and they say, well, I might not be able to get out to a bin, but I want to help, mm -hmm. they can make a monetary donation as well. Absolutely, monetary donations could be made out to Cold Hands, Warm Hearts, um, and um, the address will be on the screen. Um, and then that money is put into an account where I go buy these items that are uh, needed and then give them all to the United Charities, which then distributes them, distributes them to uh, the needy families. Now, some of the bins are already out and about, mm -hmm. but the official kickoff is very appropriate. So what day do you always like officially launch it? I like to launch it around Veterans Day because if you think about it, Veterans Day with this story, it kind of all fits in. And um, if you feel like you have a vet in your family that you love and is still around, you could do it for them or somebody that's gone in their memory. Buy something small. It doesn't cost a lot. Throw it in one of those bins and we'll make sure that someone gets it. All right. And if you have any questions or you want to know more about the program or you want to find out anything, you can give uh, Carmine a call as well. Your phone number? Uh, area code 570-751-3351. And we also have the number for United Charities. You can always give Mary Angie Shell a call there at 570-455-1529. This is wonderful. We want to have enough hats and gloves and scarves and blankets to keep everybody warm. I commend you for doing this, and I just think it's a wonderful Thank way you. to keep your dad's memory alive. Thank you. I much appreciate it, and so does everyone that receives. Thank you very much. Alrighty, and this program will be running then till December 11th, so please get your donations in as soon as possible so we can keep everybody warm. The Cold Hands Warm Hearts collection boxes will also be placed at various downtown event locations during the first Friday festivities this Friday in downtown Hazleton. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. You're looking at two churches on Church Street in Hazleton on another beautiful fall day. We are on a roll with the weather, but the question is, will it continue? Let's find out. This is our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, increasing clouds. Our low will be 47 degrees with a southeast wind around 6 miles per hour, and it will become calm after midnight. Four-day outlook time now. Thursday, a slight chance of showers after 9 a.m., mostly cloudy with a high of 64. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Thursday night, another 20% chance of showers before 1 a.m. mostly cloudy low of 56 degrees and then for our Friday 40% chance of showers after 8 a.m. it will be cloudy but our high will be in the upper 60s Friday night 40% chance of showers that's mainly before 8 p.m. our low will be 47 degrees Saturday mostly cloudy high of 53 Saturday night mostly cloudy and it will be colder with a low of 36 and then on Sunday mostly sunny with a high of 47 Sunday night mostly clear our low will be 31 degrees Let's go to lottery numbers now here on FYI. Take a look at the midday winning lottery numbers. Pick 2, 2, 8, pick 3, 1, 6, 6, pick 4, 7, 9, 9, 9, and pick 5, 2, 8, 7, 4, 0. And it's time now for our latest FYI feature, the Home of the Week. And this week's Home of the Week is located at 10 Mahopak Drive in picturesque Eagle Rock Resort. 
Enjoy nature in this beautiful, custom-built, contemporary in a quiet, pristine setting. Four bedrooms, 2.5 baths, a spacious kitchen with plenty of cabinets, master suite with walk-in closet, and a screen porch surrounded by a stone patio with a bar and hot tub. The backyard is a bit of heaven and needs to be seen to be appreciated. It's just been reduced to $289,000 and can be seen by calling Diane at 570-384-1362. And don't miss Eagle Rock Resort's exclusive show on SSP TV called Open House, which viewers can see on Cable Systems in Hazleton, Pottsville, and Wilkesbury, and also online at ssptv.com. Sports is next when we come back on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. It's another Dave Day here on FYI as Dave Seaman, the sports editor at the Standard Speaker, is back once again in the studio. And Dave, what a fall to be a Lady Cougar, Cougar in general, I guess, but Lady Cougars, what a fall. So you had the tennis team win the Wyoming Valley Conference Championship, and then you had two of the Lady Cougars win District 2 doubles championship. Cross-country team, Lady Cougars, District 2 champions. And then the field hockey team, they make their first ever District 2 final, um, AAA. And Dave, they come away with a silver medal. Great effort against a very good Coughlin team, losing 2-1. to one. Read this stat and the standard speaker that Coughlin has only given up six goals all year. Look back a little bit. Two of those goals came against Hazleton area. So they put up some points against Coughlin. And this is definitely a step forward, Dave, again, for this program. We've talked about it. Every time I would interview a Lady Cougar field hockey player, you know when you're talking to someone, they're thinking about something else. You could just tell, like, they always seemed like all they wanted to talk about was we have to get to that district championship game. They did that. They can take pride in it. And when they finally, when the program does finally win their first title, they could take pride that they helped pave the way. Yeah, I think so. I think they, as we said, it's been a it's been a long process. I, I know nobody, uh, not many teams work harder than the field hockey program. I said you see them working uh, in the heat of the summer, uh, working in the stadium evenings, and uh, they put the time in. And uh, it was rewarded this year with another step up the ladder uh, to be a successful program. As we've talked many many times, that it, it takes you got to go in increments. You got to go in steps. And uh, they did that this year. They got to the final this year. That was a big win for them, beating Wyoming Valley West in the district semifinal. They take Coughlin to the wire in, in the uh, district final. So uh, again, if you're satisfied with that, no, you're not satisfied. But if you look at the big picture, it's another step forward. And I think Coach Mary Kelly and her team have a lot to be proud of. Yeah, look at that um, championship game against Coughlin, tied 0-0 at halftime. Coughlin goes ahead by two in the second half. You would think, all right, you know, we made it this far, silver medal, let's just take it. Lady Cougars add a goal. So big time there, you know, didn't hang their heads. They, they have to be happy with that silver medal. MMI girls, Dave, the volleyball team back in a district champ Championship. It was, I can't believe it, 2009, a few years back already, that they won the district championship. Another shot here, Sean Evans, their head coach, saying it's a different team playing right now than a few weeks ago. They've been solid all year, but clicking at playoff time. Yeah, it's, it's important for them to be playing at the right time, and uh, it helps them. Of course, they're playing bigger schools all the time, too, so they're not going to be in awe of the situation. A uh, big win for the Lady Preppers last week against Crestwood. Crestwood was undefeated for a long time this season. Uh, Crestwood sputtered at the end of the season, but one of those losses was against Lady prepper so I'm sure by beating Crestwood uh, MMI got a lot of confidence they took that right into their game the other night their match the other night in the semifinals and now they look to continue the momentum into the district final and the Marion Phillies volleyball team back as usual Dave in the district 11 single a championship playing a familiar foe in nativity I was at a game between these two earlier this year Dave nativity kind of hung with the Phillies but then the Phillies just um, showed their talents and kind of pulled away we'll see what happens in that one talk more about it possibly next week college football playoff comes out Dave the rankings for the college football playoff top four teams let's put them up on your screen we have Clemson LSU Ohio State is third and Alabama in fourth right now some big big games coming up Dave this weekend as Clemson takes on Florida State. LSU will play Alabama, and of course, down the road in a little bit, Ohio State will have to play Michigan State Big Ten Championship game. What I want to talk about right now, Dave, is Notre Dame sitting at number five. You think they just sit there, hang out, and say, hey, we'll wait. Some of these teams are going to lose, and they play Stanford at the end of the year. That will be a test, but they could just wait this thing out, maybe. Uh, yeah, Notre Dame, and they have to win, too. I mean, they're going to have some tough games along the way. A uh, game against Pitt this week won't be easy in Pittsburgh. But uh, Notre Dame showed a lot by coming back to beat Temple last week. Temple, uh, as we've said all year long, uh, Temple's no slouch anymore. Uh, they push the Irish to the limit. But games like that kind of season teams for the, for the stretch run. And uh, Notre Dame had a game like that earlier this season, too, against Virginia, where they were behind and they had to come back and win when their quarterback gets hurt. Their uh, backup comes in, uh, leads them to a victory. 
And it showed on Saturday against Temple that uh, they weren't going to be awed by the situation, hostile crowd, and uh, Notre Dame went, in, went into Philadelphia, came out with a big win. And um, if they take another step forward this week and next week, uh, yeah, the Irish could be in a good position at number five. Dave, this top four will obviously change before the end of the season, before we get to the actual playoff. I want to ask you this. You think Ohio State will survive the Big Ten. Do you think they'll be there back to defend their championship? Uh, I, I think so. I, I think they do have the most talent. They do have Michigan State at home. Uh, the trip to Michigan the week after could be a little bit tough coming after uh, the Michigan State game. But uh, Coach Meyer is probably the best in the business right now. We're right up there with Nick Saban as uh, top coaches in the country. And uh, they know what it's like to win. They experienced that last year. Um, Nobody was expecting to win last year. Everybody's expecting to win this year. So a little bit of difference there. And I think that they want to prove that they could win when the bullseye is on their back. Watching all the Big Ten, I do agree with you, Dave. I think it would be interesting. And even after all the pain Iowa has caused me as a Penn State fan, it would be nice to see that dark horse maybe out of the West in the Big Ten championship game. But I agree. Just don't think it's going to happen. Dave, we appreciate you coming in. We'll get back to it again next week. Follow along in the standard speakers. District playoffs and state playoffs will start for our local teams. It's Wednesday, and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95, plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, the Rotary Club of Hazleton will be holding its 13th annual poinsettia sale now through Wednesday, November 18th. Orders can be taken from any Rotary Club member or by calling 570-454-8706. Plants will be available for pickup at Gennetti's Catering Wednesday, December 2nd, or for delivery on December 3rd or 4th. Proceeds benefit the Rotary Club Community Service Projects. And finally, the Tamaqua American Legion Post 173's annual Veterans Day Parade is set for Saturday, November 7th. Staging will start at 9 a.m. The Old Math Motors on East Broad Street. Parade starts at 10 a.m. ending at the intersection of Lehigh Street. For more info, just call 570-668-1234. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Camille M. Turi of Freeland, Mass is Thursday at 9.30 a.m. in the Immaculate Conception Parish at St. Anne's Church. Friends may call Thursday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. The McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Mary Ellen Hutton of Cunningham, Memorial is November 14th at 10 a.m. in the Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. Rita M. Bobeck of Hazel Township, Funeral is Friday at 9.30 a.m. from the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. And H. David Jones of Mountaintop. Private funeral service will be held Thursday in the Laurel Cemetery. Friends may call Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Lehman Family Funeral Service. And finally tonight, in loving memory of Christopher Lee Polchek. Nine years have gone by, and still I cry each and every day since you went away. Loving you and missing you forever. Love from Mom, Ed, Tony, Son Elijah, and Malia. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Darlene Boyer of Girardville. Darlene, if you're watching, give us a call 570-455-7267, extension 104. Still calculating some election night results. I believe I won the pizza eating contest here at SSP TV over Tim Novotny, but we shall see. Even though the election's over, more information coming your way tomorrow right here on FYI. There's information available all the time at SSPTV.com and StandardSpeaker.com. Take it easy, everyone.